So now we're in our lab environment. We want to actually configure TACX on router 4. We're going to use router 2 to access router 4 to be able to test the functionality. First thing to do is we'll go to router 4. And we'll do show running configuration. You see we're not doing anything in terms of AAA right now. I want to emphasize here we have a locally configured username, which is always a good idea because if something happens to your server, you still want to be able to get into the device. Now we actually get down to our virtual terminal configurations. We've got various things. In this case, we have a privilege level 15 already defined. So basically, it looks like everything's in order, but it's just simple configuration. So first, let's ping the loopback on router 410.444, and everything's in order. So now if we just go back to log in, now it's just asking for our password here. If we were to go back in line BTY, you can always use the question mark to see how many you have. So 0 to 988, no privilege. We'll just go back to 0. We go back in, try this again, so back out, do this again, put our password in, and we're at the usual enable mode. Simple enough. Now we actually want to enable our TACX. First, we have a TACX server set up at 192.168.254.101, and it's successfully working. Now let's actually go to our notepad because if you remember one of the things I said before is if you do your configurations in notepad and then paste them in, your chances of actually transposing numbers and getting commands wrong is somewhat reduced. So let's go here and let's just take a look at some of these commands and we'll kind of step through these. First we have our AAA new model. Remember this is the first thing you have to put in to do any AAA functions at all. And here AAA authentication. Remember, authentication is verifying the identity of the user. We're just using a default group for simplicity. But here, we're identifying TACX as the primary means by which we want to authenticate. That's why it comes first. If for some reason this fails, then we can use the local database and what we've already configured. So this is our authentication configuration. Now remember, authorization is deciding what privilege levels, in terms of the router, the user is going to be allowed to access. And here we have our exec, again the default group, TACX, if authenticated. Now we're identifying the host, the server that's actually hosting the TACX, in this case the secret key. So this is our TACX configuration, fairly simple. So authentication configuration, TACX configuration, then we apply it to our terminal lines, saying we want authorization in the group that we already talked about, and then authenticate logins. So first, let's go back. We'll do configure terminal. We'll start with our authentication commands and authorization commands, or AAA commands, basically. Looks pretty simple and straightforward. Now let's add our TACX server configuration, which we already verified the reachability of the server. Got our secret key there. Now we want to apply this to the terminal lines. Right mem. Now let's go. I'll log back out. 10.444. Now notice this. This is entirely different from what's been seen before. This is actually the hint that you are using TACX. If we had just simply done login local, remember we have TACX and then the local, then we would have actually been prompted first for username. But instead here it's asking us for a login. So we have a username and password and it let us in. Now it's easy to look at this and say, is it really working? Well, let's find out. We'll go back and we'll do debug TACX. So now as we go back here, notice here, we're already starting the process and it's waiting for the username. See where it says get user? It's waiting for the username. So we can do Now it's waiting for the password. 
So you can actually see that it is working the way that it's supposed to. It's T plus means tech X plus. Now we go over and it is saying, notice here, authorization privilege level 15 and it passed authentication. Now just to show you how the authorization levels work, I have defined in the TACX server a separate username just referred to as test with no privilege levels whatsoever. So let's actually test and see whether or not that's working. So we do test, going through the same process. Now test is the password. Now notice here, we are at a zero privilege level because that's what was assigned to that particular username. It's also worth noting that I have not defined a user called test in the local database of that router. So it's another way you know that it's actually working properly. So this kind of gives you an idea of how you can use role-based access and TACX to actually authenticate your users in accessing the device. If I do say so myself, I think that's pretty cool.